Hello everyone, Sigler here, Bork, Chef, you can call me whatever you'd like. So today I wanted to show you my macros that I'm gonna use, well, I, that I actually am using on my warrior that is level 83. Sure, I could wait on, like, m for this warrior to be level 85, to make like a max level guide, but it doesn't really matter because the only ability that we haven't learned yet is the heroic leap, and it, that, that doesn't really affect us that much with macros or anything so but yeah today I'm gonna show you the macros that I use on my warrior so like keep in mind this is not the optimal way to play it's not the the way that you're like gonna be like uh, you're gonna max out on parses if that's something that you like to do and everything this is just a way that I like to play that makes me more aware of my surroundings because I don't need to focus as much on my abilities because they are they are just dealing with themselves with my the way that I play. So keep that in mind. It's just an alternative way to play, and this is how I personally like to play the game. So let's start with the first macro, which is the charge macro. So with the macro, you have the hashtag show tooltip on everything. And if you make a new uh, new macro, press uh, pick the this one if you have the show tooltip, because whenever you uh, have like a cast sequence, for example, the icon is gonna change. So now, for example, it's Ray. Uh, sorry. Now, for example, not now for example, it's charge, but. The next next in line in the sequence is gonna be rend and there you go the next one is gonna be rend so the icon is gonna change but with this macro it's a cast sequence macro that resets after five seconds you can show how long you want it to be but i have it on between two and five i think that like three or four is the way to go but this is up to you but let me show you how it actually works so basically you just press charge and it's gonna cast rend and after that it's gonna do a thunderclap and as you can see we have rend on everything and that is because of the blood and thunder uh, that says when you <coughs> uh, when you thunderclap a target affected by rend you have a hundred percent chance to afflict the uh, effect chance to affect every target with rend so we want to have rend on everything which is super awesome and yeah it's just very convenient to have and that's just i feel like every pull we were actually that's the first thing that we want to do anyway is just charge in rend and thunderclap because then you're going to have aggro on everything for starters and with the rest of my macro macros that I have it's gonna be even more simple and sure we as warrior we are very squishy but it is what it is and I have a mole uh, like a couple of ways that makes it so it doesn't feel as squishy as I feel but that's the first macro of the day so let's go to the next one and let's go to the AOE macros and whenever I play a tank and I have like a we target macros uh, I have my keybinds on scroll up and down on my mouse so that means that I can I can move around like this while assignment if I have this clicked in and I move I'm gonna move the camera so if I press the D which is a, it's a strafe and I just move it I'm gonna be able to move around like this but I can still at the same time scroll on my other one which makes it so like I can just run around and, and go mayhem like this but yeah that's the way that I do it so the AOE macro the first one is thunderclap macro which is also, here we go again, the hashtags, hashtags show tooltip. Then we have the cast thunderclap, which is 
just gonna be prioritized and everything because we want to have it on cooldown and it refreshes rend on every target so if we missed rend on anything it's gonna put it on that one as well and we can chain pull and just bring something with rend on it up uh, onto the next pack so and just by spamming this one it's like we bring the rendered target into a new group and then we thunderclap then we have rend on everything again and then we have cleave and i have cleave on both my aoe macros i'm gonna show this one later but in the macro as well we have in rage and i just feel like there's whenever i play a tank previously before i made like a lot of macros it felt like some of my abilities i rarely used even though they are very good so it's like sure they could be very nice if you use them situational absolutely they are but it feels like overall they, it feels like it boosts your damage and your survivor survivability overall so it's up to you really but that's just the way that i did it and the inner rage is this one reduces the cooldown of your heroic strike and cleave by 50 percent for 15 seconds and it's it's a 30 second cooldown so you're gonna have it like every single pull pretty much so it's just nice to have because we're gonna have so much uh rage anyway with the way that we play it and next in line we have berserker rage which is this one enter a berserker rage removing and granting immunity to fear sap and incapitation effects and causes extra rage generation when taking damage lasts for th 10 seconds and it's on my aoe macro because if we're gonna use aoe macro instead of the single target one we're gonna face more mobs and trash which makes it so we are take more damage which makes it so we are generating more rage really so it's just nice to have and that one also has a 30 seconds cooldown then next in line we have the shield block which is this one which is also a 30 second cooldown so it increases uh, uh, your chance to block by 10 25 percent for 10 seconds in addition if you're uh, if your total chance to block or avoid an uh, attack excess 100% your uh, your chance to critical block is increased by uh, the excess and critical block to my understanding is that if you block something and you make a critical block uh, the amount uh, that you block is doubled compared to a normal block but yeah and then after that i have my trinket there as well because then i use it on pull and i do more damage which is just great and pretty much every single pull i i'm pretty much in the lead instantly because of the way that we play and in every macro that i have this one is super important the slash start attack because if you don't a attack anything like if you don't attack anything we generate less rage and we want to make sure that we always hit at least something so yeah and then after that we have the next macro which is a revenge aoe macro so here we go again the slash start attack then we have cast revenge and then we have cast cleave and cleave is one of those abilities that is not on a global cooldown so if i use an ability i can use the cleave like it doesn't share the global cooldown so you can use it whenever you want as long as it's, it's off cooldown on its own so yeah it's just very nice to have there and the revenge revenge costs there we go revenge costs five rage and has a five second cooldown and five rage is less than the cleave one because cleave costs 30 i think yeah it's 30 so it's always going to prioritize revenge because let's face it five rage that's nothing we always have more than five rage so if we block parry or uh, dodge 
we are gonna have be able to use revenge whenever it's off cooldown and whenever we it is on cooldown and we have more than then uh, because thunderclap is where is it it's this one right yeah thunderclap is 15 rage because of my glyph which is this one is reduces it to 15. so here again it's always gonna prioritize uh, thunderclap if we have less than uh, if we have less than 20 if we have like 25 it can't cast cleave for example but it can cast thunderclap so it's always gonna prioritize with the way that i have it on scroll up and down these two it's always gonna prioritize revenge and thunderclap but if we have excess if we have more if we have actually have 30 it's like yeah sure it, it uses it because it, it's gonna be no problem anyway and I just want to deal as much damage as possible and cleave also with my my glyph hits three targets instead of two so it's just very nice to have <clears throat> and yeah that's the AOE macros then I have a rend macro which is that it's kind of nice to, if I'm fighting a boss, for example, if I press this macro just once, it's just gonna apply rend, nothing else. So it's basically just a rend on the on the action bar. But but I mean, if there is two targets there, you wanna spread anyway with thunderclap. So it's like if it's a single target, just press it once and you have thunderclap, uh, rend. But I mean. You basically on bosses as well. You wanna have, uh, you wanna cast <coughs> the thunderclap also, just because it's it gives you the damage between attack is increased by twenty percent for thirty seconds. So basically, it's um, it makes the bosses or whatever hits slower. So you wanna have it up anyway. So yeah, it's just nice to have. Um, and sure, I usually, I don't know why, why it's not here, but I usually have, there we go, I usually have the normal thunderclap on the action bar as well, just because instead of casting rend again, I just use a thunderclap to refresh rend and thunderclap at the same time on single target as well. And then we have the single target one, which is basically the same as the AOE one. The exception though is that we have it on hero Heroic Strike. And Heroic Strike is just like Cleave. It doesn't share global cooldown. It's just the same but it's single target. And yeah. It's just nice to have. And then we have a Death Devastate which is the same here. It's uh, Cast Devastate and the Heroic Strike. And Devastate is your Thunder armor application and the devastate costs 15 rage and here we go again heroic strike costs 30 so again it's gonna prioritize if you have a little bit lower it's gonna prioritize uh, devastate which is a like you want to do that one anyway because yeah it just deals more damage and it yeah, it's just better. And yeah, those are the macros that I use. And uh, now I'm just gonna show you um, the weak auras that I use. Slash WA, so let's just remove them. Uh, I can have one, this one is still here. Uh, so if you go to new auras, then you go into pre-made auras, and then you go into icons. This one is up to you, but I used the huge one just because I wanted to. I just wanted to be shown. And then we'll go into buffs. And then if we scroll down, you can see here Thunderstruck. Because if we go into the talents over here, you can see here. Uh, in the second part of it, it says in addition, your Thunderclap improves the damage of your next Shockwave by 10%, stacks up to three times. 
and it's just nice to see if we have it and how many stacks we have so that's the reason why I click this one and then you can choose choose which one ever you'd like I use this one shows as a, like show only if buffed so there we go it is over here and if you press on the eye you can see the other one so I have it like this right next to it then if you go out down to the font you can increase the the size of the numbers of stack you have on it to be a little bit bigger like this one just so you can see how many stacks of it you have and then you're done and I also have the same thing I did on a shield slam let, let, let me show you new aura pre-made icon big one and here instead you go into cooldowns and then you scroll down in, uh, to the shield slam which is this one and then I have um, uh, uh, basic show on cooldown and if I pick it there we go so it doesn't show but if I run here and I use it okay there we go it's on cooldown there you go it's the same one but I just wanted to show and whenever whenever I don't see it I know it's uh, I can use it so I wanted to always show so that's up to you really but I don't like it when uh, like it shows now for example like in the middle of the screen I don't particularly enjoy that so most people do it like whenever it's uh, available to use you it's shown but I like to do it the other way around just to have a little, little bit more clean uh, now on my DK it's the absolutely other way around but yeah I just like it on warrior because the uh, the shield slam has so many great stuff on it it removes uh, it disables one magic effect on the target which is super good so if you have a the which one is it it is uh, the plater I think yeah this one if you have the plater add-on if the target has a magic effect on it and I play this it's gonna show you an icon on it that is like glowing like uh, let me show you like it's uh, like it the, it would be glowing for example <clears throat> so it's just good to see like if I'm fighting an and uh, a melee version here and then this one is a caster and it gets a buff I can switch to it and remove it or just tab until I have on it and then use it so that's just nice moving on we have I don't think there is that much else really but I mean just the the thing with here you go example I, I haven't specced it yet but I'm gonna spec into this the next two ones uh, so the basically what this is gonna make it is that your shield slam hits have a hunt uh, with it's gonna be a 10% have a 10% chance to make your next special attack special attack that costs more than five rage consume no rage so I always want to have it on cooldown and with the shield and board on the second part of it is it says in addition, when your devastate or revenge deals damage, you have a 33 uh, you have a 30% chance of refreshing the cooldown of your shield slam and reducing its costs by 100% for 5 seconds. So that's just awesome. So if you're lucky and and everything, you're going to have it on cooldown all the freaking time. And yeah I think it is I don't remember where it actually is though yeah here uh, while your shield block is active your shield slam hits for one additional 100% damage and w on AOE we have it on automatically because it's just on the macro so whenever it's on cooldown we use it basically because it deals very good damage and it removes one magic effect on the target if it has it 
But I mean, if a target usually casts a, it, it usually casts it on itself. That's the target you want to attack anyway. So, yeah, it's just very nice to have. Um, yeah, I don't think there is that much else to speak about. Uh, if you want, you can change this one. Uh, the insight into toughness if you feel like you're taking too much damage. Um, but I just like this one just to have the extra crit. Just because it's fun. <laughs> I mean, who doesn't like crit? And on my warrior, the blood gaze is very nice because the more... This is a funny thing with a warrior. So, check this out. We, as a warrior, tank, well, like any tank, you have Vengeance. Which says, each time you take damage, you gain 5% of the damage taken as attack power up to uh, a maximum of 10% of your health. So, the more health you have, the more attack power you can get. And on top of that, this one is after taking any damage, you have a 10% chance to generate 3% of your total health over 5 seconds. So there we go again. The more health you have, the more health you're gonna the more heal, the more you're gonna get healed. And then we have this one also increases all healing received by 10% and the effectiveness of your self healing abilities by an additional 20%. And I'm not sure if this one counts into this one, but we have Victory Rush. So Victory Rush is a super important ability to just to have. And I think that we actually could make a weak aura for it. Um, it's interesting. I haven't really thought of it. So let's go here, icon, big, and I think it's on cooldown. And it should be there. And shows on ready. I think I would have it on shows on ready. And then I'm gonna place it. Where's the other one? There. So I'm gonna place it over here. So that 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 one I would be okay if it's shown. It shows. Uh, I will see it all the time like this. Actually, so maybe yeah. But like so, whenever we kill something and we get, uh, we are gonna be able to use it. It will light up. But yeah, and the macros that I use is nothing major. It's like you deal ten percent more damage with revenge. We deal. We have a 5% uh, increased critical strike chance by 5%. And Shield Slam deals 10% more damage. Then we hit one more target with Cleave. We have the... Reduces the cost of your Thunderclap by 5. And then you have the Shockwave. The, like 3 seconds shorter cooldown. Battle, Command. And this one just so we have the window that we can use it for 5 more seconds. But... I want to discuss one more thing, which is Shockwave. And if you have the play rad on, you're going to be able to see if targets is casting something. And it's just a super good interrupter, really. And you can stun everything in front of you using this one. And it deals shit ton of damage if you have the three stacks from the, um, it's from this ability. Yeah, the thunderstruck. <clears throat> and if um, if you have, uh, yeah, it's just an interrupter. Uh, if you're about to die, you can use it because it gives the healer a four. Se uh, yeah, it gives the the healer like a. Four second window to heal you up again like to catch up and it's like a way that you can first use that and then like for example victory rush or 
shield wall or last stance or whatever just to heal yourself but yeah and uh, you can also use the intimidation shout just as an interrupter as well but keep in mind they will fear so if I would use it I would probably use it if I have a lot of rage because it costs 25 rage and then uh, directly after I use a thunderclap just to interrupt the fear so it's like an AOE interrupt pretty much so we have like two AOE interrupts pretty much but yeah let's make uh, let's start a dungeon and just see how it works we should have a, a there we go Oh, this one. Perfect. There we go. And we're going to be polite. Evening from Sweden. And let's see here. The healer is this one. And I usually set f uh, focus. And I usually have it like over here. Right next to me. Just so I can see the... Just so I can see the mana a little bit easier on the tank. And here we go. So I just charge in, rend, stack them up, thunderclap. And then I just use my AoE target macro. And that's basically what I do. And then I just scroll up and down, up and down, up and down. And then I can use like this. I can refresh, I can use other stuff, and just look around, really. And this is what I mean that I have played her, because you can see if someone something is gonna cast. Like, you can see the cast bar over here. It just makes this everything super simple. And I charge in, rend, thunderclap, and AoE again. And usually I just tab between the targets. Just to, yeah, just keep threat. And it's also one way because I have a, the, the details and I have a tiny threat. Just so I can see how much threat do I have on the target compared to the next in line. To the second most threat. So yeah, that was a bit of a mistake for me, but that doesn't make do anything because we can do like this and then we have spread again. So it's just super simple. Like all I'm doing pretty much is just scrolling up and down. And now, for example, I can feel like I can pop a cooldown and pull the next pack. It's not going to be a problem for me. It's just super simple. Like, it's no major problem at all. It's it's very simple. And keep in mind also, if you have if you see something is casted towards you, use spell reflect. Because then you, you're gonna deal more damage. Because the, the damage that this one uh, casts for, for example, is just going to be just more. And yeah, and the, the build that I'm playing with is uh, this one. And it's not the best one, but it's just, yeah, it's the way that I play it. Sure, I could use Concussive Blow and Vigilance, but I, yeah, this is the way that I do it. And there, red, thunderclap, and go. And as you can see, I have the uh, uh, inner rage, we have berserker rage, we have uh, shield block. Th yeah, we have everything on, really. Then can, you can place yourself. You can see it. There you go. You see the, the ability. Let's see if I can get a killing blow on this one. And there you go. It lights up. 
So that means that we can cast Victory Rush. Because it lights up. And it will, if I remove it, it's going to turn gray. So that's just nice. But yeah, that's basically the way that I play a, pal uh, a warrior tank in Cataclysm Classic. It's nothing major, and like I said previously, it's not the best, but it feels it feels easier to play. That's that's how I feel. And also another thing, whenever I play it, if I have a chance, I always want to have like as much rage as human humanely possible. And we can get that if we have the charge on cooldown. Because first of all, it generates uh, it, it generates 25. Because of this one, the Blitz. And we stack them and Thunderclap. And then I usually use like this. And yeah, as you can see on the damage. It's... Like, I'm top of the damage pretty much every single pull. Like, and now, for example, I... The Vengeance cannot consume... Yeah, I mean, uh, like, I... Now, for example, I have 6,261 more attack power. And, like, I'm not even sweating at all. This became a rather long video, but I'm gonna show you the boss uh, on like how we do on the single target one. Because the abilities that I have on the AOE target one, I don't have them on the single target one. You can use that if you want. Like these ones, for example. the These ones. But I don't have that. So, yeah. But basically, you do the same thing. Rend, Thunderclap. And then I usually do like this. I spam 2 and 4. And if it's on cooldown, the third one. I just spam that one instead. Basically. And on this boss, this is kind of nice. If you stand perfectly, you can actually still hit them. And not take any damage. Like not take that extra amount of damage. And still do damage on the target. So yeah. It's just super simple. Keep your rend up. <laughs> Says the one that forgot it. <laughs> but yeah. Like you get it. It's it's just very simple way to play the game. And we got crap. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, that's the way that I play a warrior tank. I'm currently on my road to max level and everything. So I can, yeah, just do the, the up gearing, which is the part that I love the most. Gearing up them in dungeons. So yeah, uh, thank you for watching. And if you felt like this is helping you and it gave you, gave you something, consider to subscribing and like this video if you felt like it, it's actually helping you. And comment down below if there's something like I missed or like if you have any questions at all and I'll try to answer them as best as I, I humanely can. And yeah. Uh, if you click on this video over here, it's gonna show you a video that YouTube feels like you need to watch. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm gonna greet you with a Bork Bork over there. And I'll see you over there. Bork Bork! <laughs>